Hello, you're listening to Lists and Other Things That No One Asked For with Jesse Barbin, your weekly mini podcast where stuff usually takes the form of a list about pop culture, music, growing up. It didn't so take me long after getting into music like to realize it. that I am a song guy. By that I mean I will follow the careers of certain artists and get heavily into certain genres of music, but at the end of the day, a really good song will trump all of that. If there's a good song, I don't care what genre it is or who it's by or how old or new it is. If a song gets stuck in my head, that's also a good sign. The polar opposite of being a song person is becoming so devoted to one genre of music that you close yourself off to other types of songs. I find that approach to music to be boring. We can look down on people who only like singles or hit songs or popular songs. We can look down on people who only like certain songs and aren't knowledgeable about an artist's entire body of work. Sometimes music fandom can be too dogmatic and the name three songs approach to fan purity testing is exhausting. It also starts to turn a love for music into homework. When I was in a band, the highest compliment I ever got paid was when someone would tell me that they thought a song I was involved in writing was catchy. Our band played a show and an Albuquerque scene luminary, a guy I looked up to, was in the crowd. After we finished playing, he came up and complimented us on our songs, and I was just over the moon. That's one of the happiest things that's ever happened to me. He then proceeded to hit on my girlfriend, which made me markedly less happy, but you've got to take the good with the bad. There have been a handful of times when a song has just grabbed me, where I've liked it from the first second it touched my ears, and I could listen to it and re-listen to it and never get sick of it. Some music you have to listen to to get familiar with and let it grow on you, but I have a special place in my Spotify playlist for earworms that grab you right away. So number one is Eric Hutchinson, A Little More. In the waning days of the COVID-19 pandemic, Meyer at Late Night was my favorite place. Meyer is a grocery store chain in the Midwest, for those of you who don't know, and it's like very nice. Picture a Walmart, only it is clean and well lit and has everything in stock and the employees aren't openly hostile. So a little more came on the loudspeakers and I stopped to listen. I put Eric Hutchinson in the same category as Brett Denon, kind of a sensitive singer-songwriter pop rock. It has big spaces in the music, like like instrumental, the part, like kind of like Locked Out of Heaven or Talking in Your Sleep. Despite the brightness of the instrumentation, the lyrics seem to be about essentially calling your Narcotics Anonymous sponsor when you're trying to get clean or stay clean from drugs or calling a friend when you're trying to stay clean or fight off a craving. Eric Hutchinson contains multitudes. Number two, Little Red Corvette by Prince. This song has it all, uh, really does, I can't say that enough, has a flawless chorus, the dynamics between verse and chorus are awesome, the lyrics are good, double entendre, and if that wasn't enough, it also has the best guitar solo of all time. Prince was obviously a gifted musician and songwriter, and I think this might be the best pop song of all time. It has everything, I'll go to bat for it anytime. Number three, Grace Potter, Something That I Want. I don't know who Miss Potter is or what her relationship is to the Harry Potter universe, but this song rules. I heard it coming from my own living room. It comes on at the end of Tangled, which is one of my kids' favorite movies. I think it's all right. Um, I heard it come on, and I left what I was doing in the kitchen to come out and listen to it. It has a weird organ, and when the chorus hits and, like, the bass and everything comes in it just grabs me it gets to the chorus real quick it has cool little keyboard fills and i really like the bridge 
Number four, Juan Luis Guerra Tus Besos. This technically falls under the genre of bachata, which is, I usually find it to be too slow and too boring, but this song has cool hooks. Juan Luis Guerra is the king of bachata or something like that, and he layers his vocals until it sounds like a bachata doo-wop mashup song, and it sounds so unique, and it immediately captured my attention. Next is Kina Granis, Without Me. I originally heard about Kina Granis because she had that viral stop motion jelly bean music video. I think she's known for her YouTube covers, but her originals are nothing to sneeze at. I like this one because it's an upbeat breakup song with the most bittersweet and understated lyrics like singing, if you need, I'll stay a while, when it's implied that the author desperately wants just to stay. Ah, uh, it's heartbreaking. Next is Hypnodancer by the band Little Big. Did you first hear about Little Big and the Eurovision Song Contest uh, in 2020? They had the most unhinged song and music video. Um, anyway, that's where I first heard about them. The bass in this song is so good. They're this Russian oddball band. Um, it's stuck in my head immediately, and I hummed this bass line constantly for a month. I don't think it's a real bass, but it's, it's programmed. But I watched YouTube tutorials to learn how to play it on bass. Next is Water Park's Stupid For You. I think it's all the falsetto that gets me with this one. Austin Knight is the singer and he's all over the place here. Each part of the song is super memorable. It has a sick post chorus and I'm a sucker for post choruses. Even the last chorus, like where another band might cut and paste, he's got kind of another variation on it. Uh, I think it's really genius, this song. Next is Ava Max, Kings and Queens. This is another grocery store find, a Smith's in Albuquerque, coincidentally. I love a song that starts with the chorus. It has silly chess metaphors and weird instrumental breaks in the middle. Don't mind if I do. This one goes hard right out of the gate. Eve 6, Promise. At the risk of sounding stupid, I will say that I love it when the guitar goes chk chk and there's lots of dun dun chk chk dun dun chk chk in this chorus. 
It's a common chord progression, but it's executed perfectly here. The lyrics are kind of silly. I really have always liked this one. And the last song, and I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit it, is it's uh, I Had Some Help with Post Malone featuring Morgan Wallen. I know he's not necessarily a good dude, but anyway, I never went out of my way to hear music by either of these dudes, but this somehow still made its way into my ear holes and stuck. It's light and breezy with funny lyrics. It sticks to a very concise pop song structure and chord progression, and I think that might be part of its staying power. I'm always on the lookout for new songs. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. If you prefer reading, there's a sub stack. You can talk to me on any social medias at Jesse Barbin. Have a good week. Let's just start this whole thing over.